So there are lots of other reasons to grow food, including it tastes better, it's better for you, done right, it's better for the environment, and, and last but certainly not least, it can connect you with other people. So how are we doing as far as supplying these, these basic needs? We've, we've talked about food, but let's, let's sort of back up to, uh, to planet Earth here, our big blue marble. Um, one of the other things about permaculture that I think is, is uh, that makes it, it popular is that it tries, tries to present a positive outlook. Problems are opportunities for making changes and, and potentially setting up businesses. I'm hopefully, hoping that those of you who are going into business um, get some ideas for different things that you might attempt. Okay, so this is, is kind of a neat application. If you haven't seen it before, um, ignore all the advertising stuff. I apologize <laughs> for that. This is a, a, a world clock that, that is set up to, to show what the population I is doing. And so you can see uh, getting up there towards 7 billion. <coughs> And that's a lot. Um, you can, and it just this is a handy tool, I think, in terms of, of uh, you know talking with people or just trying to convince them about you know okay what's going on. Uh, this this is also interesting. Um, some environmental statistics: uh, CO2 emissions, extinctions, forest loss. Uh, we're having having an impact. Some of the businesses that are booming right now are, are related to these basic resource uh, industries and, and they're businesses that are, are changing the model a little bit from the take, make, waste model to a more of a borrow, use, and return model where the, the cycles are being closed in terms of, of not creating any waste or waste that can be used by something else. And uh, this, this agricultural chemist who lived in the 1800s, uh, Justice von Liebig, um, came up with this principle known as, as Liebig's Law, which is a very useful way of, of expressing uh, how a population or an organism grows and, and essentially it says that the growth of an organism depends upon the, the resource that is most limiting, which that, that makes sense. Um, the, the idea that, I, or the thing that I really like about, about the idea is they have this, they call it Liebig's barrel, where imagine that each one of these staves or slats that makes up the barrel is, is a different resource required for growth. Let's just take a plant for example. So we might have nitrogen and phosphorus and potassium and sunlight and and depending on the plant and where it is each of those different resources is going to be available in different amounts and and the resource that is is the the lowest for example in aquatic systems phosphorus is is usually the limiting uh, uh, resource there. And so phosphorus could be the lowest stave on the barrel. If we add phosphorus to, the system, to an aquatic system, what happens? We get these giant algae blooms. And so we've, in a sense, raised up the size of that, that stave in the barrel. And now the algae population is limited by whatever the next resource is. So the, the, the point here is that there's, there's always something that's going to be limiting and uh, that we, we can substitute around to some extent, but at some point we need to acknowledge that, I mean at the very least, the amount of space on Earth is is finite. There's some people who've done some calculations about rates of growth and shown that just physical space for humanity is is potentially limited 
if, if we continue at the, the growth rates that we're, we're growing at.